Hello and welcome back to the podcast. This episode is called The Lying Game Number 9 with Amber and Paul. And uh, to help you understand, enjoy and learn more from this episode, I'm just going to explain a couple of things here uh, right at the start. Now, some of you might not need this introduction. It depends on your level of English. But, you know, you can just skip forwards if you really want to. It's only a few minutes. Uh, but my comments here are designed to be helpful. Um, so this is another conversation with Amber and Paul, my friends, and we're going to play a speaking activity called The Lying Game. Now, I know that some of you are already familiar with this game, but for the uninitiated, this game is something of a tradition on this podcast. Um, it's based on a speaking activity which I've been using in my English classes for about 15 years. Um, you'll hear us recap the rules of the game in a moment, but it's very simple. Basically, just listen carefully and try to decide if our stories are true or lies, okay? As you listen, I expect you might have some questions which you would like answered. Some of those will be language questions about certain words, phrases, bits of pronunciation or grammar. For example, Luke, what does it mean to fall off the wagon? That's something you're going to hear in a few moments. What does it mean to, what does that mean, fall off the wagon? And what's the difference between fat, fatty, and fattening? And is the funnest thing, is that word funnest, is that correct English? All right, now other questions will be about the specific details that you might not catch while listening to our stories, uh, like what exactly happened in each case. Like, wait a minute, Luke. Was that story a lie or was it the truth? Which parts of that were true and which parts were not true and so on? What just happened? What, what are they talking about? You might be thinking these things. Now, it can be tricky to listen to three fluent speakers of English, especially close friends, talking quickly together. I know what it's like because it happens to me with French all the time, right? And when I'm in situations where everyone's speaking French around me quite quickly, that can be quite confusing because there are unfinished sentences, you get connected speech with the words all connecting together, uh, people talk over each other a little bit, they interrupt each other. Now that does make it tricky to follow, but what I will say is that this is normal, natural, fluent speech, and it is important for you to get familiar with it. The more you practice listening to this kind of thing, the more you will be able to follow conversations like this. Uh, but yes, you might have questions as you listen. So at the end of the episode, in the last 20 minutes or so, I'll help you by summarizing each story, first of all. So I'm going to summarize the three stories, uh, telling you in plain English exactly what happened in each part of the game. So I'll summarize all that stuff at the end. And also, I will explain quite a lot of vocabulary which comes up. And I've made a vocabulary list, phrases, idioms, specific words, and so on. Stuff like to fall off the wagon, to be fattening, you know, that sort of thing is in it. I've created a list. I'll go through the list at the end of this episode. So listen to us playing the game, try to work out if we're lying or telling the truth, and I'll clarify vocabulary at the end. And that vocabulary section at the end will be a little taste, just a little little taste of the kind of thing that I do normally in my premium episodes where I focus ex exclusively on explaining and teaching language. Right, so there you go. Listen all the way to the end, you'll get some explaining right? And finally, premium subscribers, just a little note for premium subscribers. I uh, just want to make sure that you've noticed I've published uh, parts one to six of premium series 56, which will actually be an eight part series in total. So parts one to six have been published. Um, this series, P56, it's all about vocabulary, which I used in episode 863 recently. Uh, that episode was called You and Your English in 2024. Remember all the words that I highlighted in that lurid green colour? Yes, yeah, so that's the vocabulary I'm clarifying, explaining, teaching and helping you remember and use in this premium series, P56, which is available now for premium subscribers. There are vocabulary reviews, pronunciation episodes, PDF worksheets, video versions, discussion questions for speaking practice, memory exercises, all that stuff. 
So just make sure if you are a premium subscriber that you've added LEP Premium to a podcast app on your phone and then you can access all of the show notes for each episode. You can find the PDFs and video versions. And if you've done that, if you've added your premium subscription to a podcast app on your phone, you will see P56 parts one to six in your episode list. They're fresh in there. Uh, with the other parts, number seven and eight, coming very soon. Okay, sign into your Acast Plus account to manage your subscription and to add the episodes to a podcast app on your phone. Um, that's plus.acast.com. That's if you're a premium subscriber. Uh, if you want to sign up to Luke's English Podcast Premium to get access to all those episodes, then be my guest. Just click the link that you will find in the show notes of this episode. Okay, but now let's get back to the Lion Game. I hope you enjoy it and stick around until the end to hear me clarifying and explaining some vocabulary a bit like the way I do in premium episodes. Oh, and by the way, there's a little bit of rude language, a little bit of swearing in this episode, which is kind of normal for, you know, these episodes with my friends. So there's a bit of rude language. And so I just thought I'd let you know. And I expect some of you now are going fantastic. Great. <laughs> That's wonderful news, Luke. Brilliant. Now, can we get started? Yes. OK, let's get started. And we'll do that right now. Here we go. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to this latest episode of Luke's English podcast. And yes, Amber and Paul are back with me. How are you two? The same as you were when we recorded the last episode? I am better, Good. if anything. Really? Yeah. How come? Well, you treated us to lunch. I fed you and filled you with coffee. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Good. So we're ready. Now, uh, what are we going to do in this uh, episode we're going to do we're going to play the lion game the lion game why are we going to play the lion game paul because it's one of the funnest things to do and because one of your listeners or one of your oh yeah one of your people one of my people who i think is one of your people i think he's a, a lepster yeah who came over to my podcast uh which uh, is on youtube uh he was like oh when are you going on luke's uh english podcast again to do the lion game and that's when I called you, you live. You called me live. And I said, when are we doing this? And you're like, well, you tell me because you're the busy one uh, yeah. who's not in Paris ever. And I was yeah. like, this is a good point. And so we picked today. And bang, here today we are. Is the day. It's, it's actually happening. Mm. What is the lying game? Can you explain the, the rules? We Amber? tell a story. Yeah. Um, and you, the other two people listening, must ask questions and then decide, is the story true or is it a lie? If there's one detail in your story which is a lie, then the, it, it invalidates the entire story. So there's no mixing. No, it's, it's either 100% true It depends or it's on the detail, I think, though, doesn't it? No. Because if it's like I had a cup of coffee with George Clooney and you actually ended up having a beer with George Clooney, I, I feel like that's a detail that is you can lie about like you can't be like you can't have had a cup of yeah you, you can't have had a beer with george clooney and the, the lie is i had a coffee with george clooney yeah but no and everyone's like yeah. oh we think it's true and you're like i didn't have a coffee i had a beer just don't yeah. do that just don't be a dick Not so it depends on the detail is what yeah. i'm saying just, yeah but no one's gonna do that right no. no none of us are gonna do no that. but you i think we, both of you got annoyed at me because one time i did something similar to that maybe yeah but you've learned your lesson so <laughs> Look, this is not our first time playing this game. No. We know what we're doing and we don't have much time. So I think we yeah, should let's, just get let's into crack it. On. Okay, so who wants Who's to going get, first? Who wants to, oh, by the way, oh, I need to just say... Uh, uh, so Maybe I count, we should timer it. Yeah, we probably oh, should. Well, yes. we've got an actual timer because, you know, we don't want to be uh, late for Paul's interview. Okay. Uh, with like uh, How pro many? proper media. Um, so this is the ninth lying game that we're playing on this podcast. Would you like to know the scores so far? Oh, I actually calculated. I think I've never Can't. won the lying game. So here's the thing. Get this right. Get this. So are we on equal? Amber has got fourteen points in total. In total, I've got fifteen points. Paul has got sixteen points. He's good. He's really good what? at the lying game. He's actually. I thought I lost this every time. No, What's the you thing always, I always win. Lose? No, everything else. You always win the vocabulary <laughs> games. Where it's like, can you guess the idiom that I'm trying to explain? You mean I lose those games? You lose those games because you okay. don't know any words. But, you, <laughs> but you're <laughs> quite good at this game. You are oh. historically really oh, good at this okay. game. So, if, for example, if I tell a story, this is just a bit more rules. If I tell a story and you guess it wrong, you think it's a lie when it's, in, when it's true, or you think it's true when it's a lie, you don't get a point, but I steal a point from you. Mm. That's kind of the way it goes. Well, if you get it correctly, you get a point. 
No, yeah. I don't. If you guess correctly, you get a point. Basically, if you guess incorrectly, the storyteller uh, gets a point. Yeah, okay. All right, Will yes. you maintain your title? <sighs> Okay. Everything to play for. So we've got one more after this. So this is game number nine. So this we'll have to do it. How many stories are we telling? We're just telling one just, story. Oh, each. I one story I each. I, I think that's probably enough, okay, unless okay. there's a tie-break situation that's needed. Oh, okay. Okay. otherwise it's just one story each. Do you have a story? I have a story. I don't have more than a story. Okay. Yeah, you just have one thing to yeah. tell us. Yes. Okay. Who wants one to go story. first? Go for it, Paul. Because you got me to just okay. case. Right. Yeah. Paul, tell us the thing. Paul, tell, tell us, us the tell thing. us your thing, listeners, viewers. Is this true or is this just made up bull crap? Okay. okay. Which one is it? So, um, in the previous episode, yes, where we had a catch up, mm -hmm. I talked about the, my worst show. Yeah. Um, this year in Portugal. in Portugal. In Portugal, there were just some kids at the front and the parents at the back, and they're mm -hmm. about ten percent of your normal audience. Yeah. It was. It was. It was. It was a rough show, um, and I guess the the the, the phrase the, the, this is the story of the thing is like that show was so bad that I relapsed from my non-alcohol. I've been, as you both know, I've stopped drinking uh, over a year ago in September of yeah. 2022, yeah. and that show was so bad um, that I got completely shit faced and um, vomited the next day. Um, and got hung over again because that's what happens to you if you drink too much you you don't just vomit once it's like it, it just keeps yeah it keeps happening the, yeah the so i after. relapsed and i'm back on the alcohol so you fell off wait, and, you wait. and now you're drinking just regularly again it wasn't just a one-off relapse no it was i'm drinking again i'm I, I was just like you know what fuck it so you fell okay. off the wagon I, I fell off the wagon as we like to say in english after the bad show yeah and i was just like you know what i, I did a year I don't need to do any more. And now you're back to drinking again. But he's still looking very thin he and healthy. He still looks quite svelte. svelte. Svelte, yes. Right? Yes. Yeah, you do look in good shape. Well, I mean, this know, was only in September. You can actually look. You can check the episode archive and see the episode before the last episode. <laughs> I think all the episode before that. And I'm a fat you're a little bastard. bit chubby and you're there like showing off how chubby you are. Mm. And then li I'm yeah, showing yeah, you're like, look at this. I need to lose weight, you're saying. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> And uh, all. Yeah, Jesus. yeah, yeah, and then a couple of episodes later, there you are, all slim. Oh, I saw a video of me yesterday in in Montpellier because I was there. I got back yesterday, and the the a year and a half ago, I was there with the audience, being like, "Hey, it was a great show, blah blah." And I did the same video yesterday, and the difference is out of control. Yeah, it's really? like I needed to stop, or I just needed to get fit. Well, it just shows, <laughs> you know, like alcohol, especially beer, is very fattening. You know, all that gluten and all that stuff, and it's yeah, and, nice. it, and you swell. It gets you sort of all mm. swollen. Yeah. Mm. So if you want to lose, you know, lose weight, give up gluten, it's oh. beer, especially. Yeah. Okay. So you 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 did a really bad show, mm -hmm. a, ba a show that went badly in mm -hmm. Portugal. It was so you felt so terrible that you fell off the wagon, as we say in English, meaning you you no, you, you went you first. got back onto alcohol, mm -hmm. and you got really drunk and felt mm -hmm. sick the next day. And I didn't feel sick. I, you were I was sick. sick. And didn't that make you think, uh, not drinking is the way forward? Like, if that was what happened, uh -huh. wouldn't throwing up and feeling awful just be like, oh, no, not drinking is better? So you're back to regularly drinking every well, evening? Not, uh, not not every evening, but I'm like, I'm I'm not, not on the, like, you know. Yeah. Not, I just, yeah, I just got completely hammered again. Mm. But that, that means that alcohol is kind of back a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. How much mm. do you drink every evening now? Well, it depends where I'm at. If I'm on tour, yeah. uh, it's it's a couple. Couple of? A couple of beers. Because I, I drink beers. a beer on stage, yes. as I always have. Mm -hmm. yes. So I tend to drink a beer before to get me kind of in the mood again. But since you quit booze, mm. you've been drinking no alcohol. No alcohol beer. beer yeah. Like zero percent beer yeah. on stage. Yeah. <laughs> but that's back to normal beer, it's isn't it? It's back to normal beer, yeah. Uh -huh. It's back to normal. Because here's the thing, especially on tour, like finding non-alcoholic beer, it's a fucking nightmare, and there it's it's if, if at best it's like Heineken Zero, which is not nice. So I was look, I was like, I, a year's gone, it's fine. I I because the original reason I stopped was because I thought I had a problem, and then one thing led to another. It lasted. You did. <laughs> no, I, no, yeah, I don't have a problem. Time to, I can have a problem again for well, a while. I, yeah, no, I didn't have a problem because I realised I could stop mm. for a year and not really be like gagging to start again yes but yeah the show was so bad um that i had the non-alcoholic beer on stage and that it was just an hour and a half of 
nothing no reactions no laughs and at the that end of it's hard that's really at, tough yeah at the end even of that bit about the russian joke they didn't laugh about that they didn't no of course did they you didn't cut no. it short did you cut the show short i tried to but as i was trying to cut it short on stage you know you're thinking about shit yeah. is there a callback to that later on in the show yeah, yeah, yeah. and i was just like fuck it i'll just do it so it's like just an hour it. and 20 minute tunnel and oh. at the end i said to my manager adam i'm like i i now need a real beer and one and thing he was on. very happy to oblige um, I or, don't, did, or did he caution against it? That's a good question. I don't really remember. Don't remember. Because as your manager, surely it is du- it's his duty to have your welfare. But he is Scottish. True. He Just, and he, he drinks as well. He, he still drinks, does, doesn't he? Yeah. He does drink, yeah. Um, so maybe he was, he's been waiting for this moment. Like, finally, Paul's back on the booze. Great, we can drink together. Yeah. I, 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 he wasn't happy, happy. Like, he wasn't like, fucking finally! He was just like, are you... Are you sure? I think he said, are you sure? I don't know. I yes, can't remember. Yes. But he got me a real beer. I and think then, it's okay. I mean, like, you did stop for a bit and you fancied a drink. Mm. But yeah, he's is he, he's back on the booze now, though. But it's what does slip, that really mean? It's a slippery slope. It just means that he drinks. No, but I mean, again. like, it, a lot of people drink. Like, I don't think it's inherently wrong to it's drink inher- alcohol. No, not wrong, but it's a slippery slope, isn't it? it well, it depends know. if we think that he was in a bad place before. I think a little bit. I think what was interesting was that you was, you became aware of how associated your brand was with alcohol. And, you know, the reason you stopped, there was a good reason why you stopped. It was about time and energy and effort. And then it takes, wow. it's good to sort of have a minute to reflect on that. Well, the, yeah. Mm-hmm. But Amber, is, the, is what he's saying is it, true or a lie? Yes. I remember actually going back to that point mm. you said about how connected his brand was to alcohol. Uh, in this most recent show or maybe the one after I can't mm. remember but you say on stage oh by the way this is not actually real beer I quit yeah. drinking mm-hmm. and it's like some audiences kind of go oh mm-hmm. like they're disappointed yeah. that yeah. you're not an alcoholic anymore <laughs> you know um, yeah. but anyway is the is what he's saying true or is it a lie is he I think okay mm. look a really rough show like that touring away from home a year of sobriety not driven because you think you're in the in the dire straits and also surrounded with how can i put this super bock in portugal well i was going to say adam adam yeah (laughs) um (laughs) who i did not find the most supportive of your sobriety oh really Uh, yeah he was always like oh have a drink um i'm gonna say i'm gonna say it's true i'm gonna say you did have a drink after that show you think that he did have a drink and that he continued so, okay, I've got a question. I want to drill down into the next day a little bit here. Okay. okay. So, you had your booze, you got shit-faced, mm-hmm. uh, and then the next day you were really sick and you were throwing up all day. Mm-hmm. Right. So, at what point did you think, hmm, another drink would be a good idea? When did that happen? It happened before I got on stage the next day. You did. Mm-hmm. A, you had a drink before you got on stage? Well, I, I, so the next day we were in Faro. That was the show the bad show the bad show and then lisbon the next day so we drove up to lisbon yes and before i got on stage um now that you're saying it adam yeah he ah. he, he goes <laughs> we need to have a little word with adam i think he goes he, he goes hair of the dog hair of the dog that means um basically when you've got a bad hangover the best cure is to drink some more alcohol terribly dangerous uh strategy yeah because we i tried like coke i tried like water coca, coca-cola Co- coca-cola yeah and I still, I wasn't feeling great before going on stage. He's like, mate, just have a fucking beer. Mm. And so uh, I had a, I had a beer and then took it on stage. And then the show actually went all right. The show in Lisbon was great. It was show it was went fun. well. You see, and the the reward mechanism kicked into his brain. It was like, see, alcohol is good. I didn't yeah. think about that, but potentially subconsciously. Mm. And just, uh, one of the things because we've had, as I mentioned. Uh, we've had a lot of problems logistically on the tour. One of them, the two, the three main logistic problems are getting a stool on stage yeah. that I can put my glass of beer on. Mm. Number two is the glass of beer is often not the right shape. You need a pint. I want a pint, not a fucking wine glass that's that holds the same amount as yeah, a pint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And three is the contents of that, which in the rider we put non-alcoholic beer uh, of a specific brand. It was the... Um, Brooklyn lager, whatever, because right. yeah. it actually tastes of something as yes. opposed to Heineken. But yes. obviously, when you go to Budapest and Faro and Berlin, oh, well, Berlin was actually pretty good for non-alcoholic beer. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, the the so I was just like, you know what? It's easier just to get a local 
you know artisanal mm. beer which mm. is way easier mm. to find mm. and way tastier so amber what do you think you, you still think I'm it's sticking, true i'm sticking with i think it's true i do think if you're not motivated by something bigger you know like a bigger narrative as well to stay not drinking mm. is difficult um and i do think that you're that all of those factors coming together absolutely make 100 percent sense to me and i think that I think that you have questions to ask about how you relate to alcohol. I do think that that is something that we can all ask, not just you. Mm. But I but I don't think that you went into that thinking, oh, I've got a massive problem. I'm never going to drink again. No, you didn't. You you were like, oh, this was a bit rough. I'm going to see how it goes. So you, you always had quite a, quite a sort of like, let's just see how it goes attitude, which is also really good. But I can definitely see why being on tour, being with Adam, a terrible show. Yeah, I'm going to Yeah, I believe true. it too. I'm gonna, I what she said basically mm. I, that's I also, what she said yeah. mm -hmm. literally what she just said now, <laughs> cheating cheating in this case would be he did get shit faced but then he stopped drinking you so, think you that know, would be cheating no but that would be like if he if we said oh it's not true because actually I just had the drink and then didn't carry on do you know what I mean we talked about earlier the yeah the you think that would be a case of that do you I think that would be cheating because uh, um, okay. the full question was like that he carried on as well but I'm going to say yes it's definitely true go on then You've I think got, it's true that you you did drink after mm. the show but did you carry on well is that part of it well i think it is considering that's what he said in yeah his story. exactly that's what i'm saying yeah, but i think be, it is part it of it it would be yeah. cheating i think if you he think said so? if he said that it was only half do you think he carried on yeah i think so Give i don't know he answer. looks he looks still looks kind of slim i know but he really slimmed a lot so there's a lot of room for uh, expansion. And it's only This also wasn't only that long November. ago. It's only, yeah, only November. Okay, I'm going to say it's and true And he's cycling as well. around. True, you know? yeah. Yeah. And the anger as well, maybe. And the <laughs> anger. The fury <laughs> burns a lot. He burns with anger, burns burning the, the calories. The calories away. Okay, so we're both saying it's true. It's quite okay. risky. We're putting all our, both our eggs into one basket here. Okay, then. He could end up with two points here, but let's see. So, true. Well, ah, cheating. You think it, I don't well, think it's cheating? Okay, so let me tell you the initial plan okay. of me coming up with this story. Yes, went for this game. Yes, you're the ones who twisted it. What? He's cheating. Because you're gaslighting us. No, he already. is gaslighting. No, I'm going to make it you rewind. Yeah, you're, no, but here's okay. So let me tell you the story. What actually happened was I did get shit faced. Okay, but I stopped. When? Straight afterwards. I haven't drank since then. Ah. See, but I don't but, think he said that. No, but yeah. I, I never said that. What I st My line was, I, the show was so shit that um, I got completely shit-faced. I wasn't expecting you guys to go, what, and you have restarted. And then I was like, oh, God, I don't know how to oh, get out. All right, all right. I, I don't know. So, we got, so what you're saying I'd say is it's half a point. your initial statement, because that's actually the way the game's supposed to be done. You give a statement. Yeah. yeah. And then we drill down into uh -huh. the statement to get, uncover the story. Yeah. The initial statement was, I did a show, it went badly, and I fell off the wagon and got shit-faced. Uh -huh. Full stop. And we've said that's true. So I think we get a point. We get the point. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Because we could have said, did you carry on drinking? And you could have said, no, I just got shit-faced on that one thing. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Because because then because I was expecting I was expecting the questions to be all right. Well, what did you drink? How were you feel like about right. that? Think you drank and, beer. And, and all of the, the <laughs> all of the questions were related not to that evening. None of you had yeah. no questions right, about all, the evening. Yeah. You had all questions about that. So that's Continuing. where it, it went down a, a weird. Okay, okay, I think we get the point. I think we get the point too. Uh, Paul, Sorry, Paul. I would like to I say think you get half a point. No way. No. Step, yeah, no, because no. you 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 made the story oh, into something that it no, wasn't. No, because you because we asked you to carry on drinking, and okay. then you could right. say no. I knew it. I knew it. He's a cheater. So cheater. if you'd have so if I'd have said no, okay, would that have, okay? All right. I, so I could have said no. I stopped drinking since then because you were muddying the water. Yeah. Honestly, I think we need to stop discussing it. All right, and just all right. I'll sorry, the referees have it. made that decision. It. That's us. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, and that's I'd like that. to say, yeah, totally understand why you got shit faced, and I'm really pleased you have stopped drinking though same what she said yeah because yeah. <laughs> i think it's better for better for you better so, for everyone one point okay one point, one point. Okay, okay no points at the moment so do you want to go uh, yeah right, i'll go next okay. so that's 16 16 15 four oh yeah 15 okay, okay. Yeah. so my statement is this so i once took a hot air balloon ride uh -huh. with bill oddy and r2d2's daughter what <laughs> 
Let's, should we just guess now? Okay. This is just t- just madness. Hot air balloon. I went up in a hot air balloon. What country? In England. Where in England? Wait a minute. Bill Oddie. They don't know who I that is. I don't know who Bill Oddie is You don't either. know who that is no. either? Of course he doesn't. Who's, who's Bill Oddie? He's a comedian. Well, well yeah. Comedian good. turned television presenter, bird watching ornithologist, nature oh. lover. He used is to it? present uh, Spring Watch and Autumn Watch mm. alongside Kate Humble. Uh, sort of a uh, guy from the... He was a comedian in the 60s and 70s and then turned into a TV yeah, presenter. Okay, about I oh, yes. Okay. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I recognise yes, him now. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because he looks really different now than and, he... Okay. And he crops up in Alan Partridge stories. And who in the hell is R2-D2's daughter? R2-D2's daughter is, is well, the daughter of the, the actor uh-huh. who plays R2-D2, or played R2-D2. What do you mean who movies. played R2-D2? So D2? inside the little... Inside the R2D2 oh. suit, there's a man in there. Um, his name's Ken, his name was Kenny Baker. Yes, right, true. Uh, so a lot of the some of the scenes, it's um, it's a model, and other scenes, there's actually an, an actor, a, a small yeah. actor inside the the thing. So, so it was Kenny Baker's daughter, not Kenny Baker himself, although he was there, but he didn't go up in the hot air balloon. But Bill Oddie did, and Kenny Baker's daughter did, and so did me and my dad and my brother. Okay, should we should we call out what the cheating is in this in this sense? If there is a cheat, no, I don't think there's a cheat. I think he's telling the truth. You think he's telling the truth? Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> don't you want to ask me more questions? No, because really? you never lie, and it's no. too obscure. <clears throat> well, because oh, the cheating, ask the, me some the, the, okay. the cheating ask, would be other people, other famous well, people. The in The cheating, I mean, because it would be too ridiculous if it was like. In fact, it was um, C three PO's daughter <laughs> and Eddie Izzard. That, yeah, exactly. Okay, where were you in England? I'm not sure. It's somewhere in the Northwest Midlands. How old were you? I was about, I think I was about 12 or 13. How come you're up in this hot air balloon? My dad, who used to work for the BBC, was making this programme. Okay, let's just say. With Bill Oddie, with a hot air balloon. And one day he was like, do you want to go up in the hot air balloon? Why was the hot air balloon? Were you filming up there? My dad was making this show about Bill Oddie flying around in a hot air balloon for BBC BBC in the Midlands. Why was R2-D2's daughter? I don't know. But Kenny Baker had been working at BBC Pebble Mill okay. doing something else. And he had the opportunity to come for the hot air balloon. There's no way this is not true. Paul, <laughs> let's just let's just confirm. It's, it's, it's either it's either it's either he's gone through because he's been through all the episodes. Because yeah. he talked about this and like, oh, this is episode nine and yeah. blah blah blah. And he's gone through the scores and he might have realized himself that he's never lied before. Yeah, he's I have lied. I have lied in this game before. Have you? Yeah. That's a lie. I talked That's about, the only lie. I talked about knocking down <laughs> a wall in a Japanese oh, apartment. It was so rubbish, that lie. I remember oh. it. <clears throat> Listen. Um, you don't want to know more about R2-D2? Because it's no. just we... I think this all happened and maybe he wasn't... It wasn't him that was there. It was some other random It person. wouldn't surprise me if he has looked this up that it did happen <laughs> and he wasn't in that balloon. Yeah. Like, the story is true. The only lie is Luke's presence. However, I'm still going to say it's true. Because gonna... I've got nothing to lose. I'm at the bottom of the pile and I'm happy to, to stay in my <laughs> down position. Yeah, Do you okay. want to know why R2-D2 didn't go in the balloon? No. No. No, all right. Why didn't he go in the balloon? Because he was like, he said, I'm not, I'm not going to go up in the balloon. Because once we get, listen, once we get the result, then we'll get the full story. He said, I'm not going to go up in the balloon because, get this, R2-D2 doesn't fly, he said. And I was like, and my brother and I were both thought to ourselves, well, yeah, he does. He literally goes up in all the spaceships. But Kenny Baker was like, no, I won't, I won't be flying up in the balloon because R2-D2 doesn't fly. Was this um, a day of filming? Which made no also, sense. Also, would he not be able to look over the basket? Might have been the real reason because he's only about, he was only about a metre point two in height. So that mm. might have been the actual reason. But he That's he real. was grandstanding by saying, no, no, R2-D2 doesn't go, doesn't fly. Why would he ask us to ask him the question? Because I wanted to, I wanted to share. Because he likes this story. Because it must be a true story. Because he's, he's okay, dredged up this true. story from his childhood. <laughs> it's a really good story. He's got lots of funny, weird details. Would he have and not mentioned very it before, key. though, in the nine episodes? He's very old. He's got a plethora of stories <laughs> true. hidden away in, in, in his dad and the BBC. Honestly, if it didn't happen, I'm happy to I lose I didn't know that your point. dad worked at BBC. Really? No. Yeah, 30 years. Yeah, he was a broadcast journalist and... We have covered this. And documentary maker with... Not docu... No, he made some programmes when he moved to the Midlands. He became... He was like a... So what was this programme? Was this the weekend? It was called The Balloon. 
The balloon. Okay. You never saw it because it was only on in the Midlands, BBC in the Midlands. It was okay. a local oh, show. God, that sounds terrible. Um, was this a weekend or did you take it's a day of school? F- full Alan Partridge, that show. Like, basically, Bill Oddy travels around the Midlands in a hot air balloon. Was the um, balloon tethered or did you no, land no, it was somewhere proper, else? No, no, full on trip How in a hot air balloon. How long did you travel? About an hour and a half. Was your dad there? Yes. Was it cold? Yes, very cold. Oh, yes, come we on wrapped then. up warm. It was so very. How many uh, of you were there, were there in the in the in the basket? My yeah. brother, me, my dad, um, the the pilot of the balloon, Bill Oddy, and whatever her name was, and uh, that's R two D 2s daughter. And wh- six, how how tall is she? She was normal height. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, have you changed your position? No. No, Luke. So. It uh, is. <laughs> so what well, you're saying it's true, yeah, both we of are. you. It's a complete lie. Oh. I made it up entirely. Oh. Oh, ye of little faith. You didn't think I had it in me. No. Yeah, well, we there didn't. you go. Complete it, bollocks. Any of it true? Uh, I have been up in a hot air balloon, but mm-hmm. certainly no Bill Oddy and no R2-D2 involved oh, that would at have all. Been, you know what I was R2-D2, thinking? Not R2-D2, you know, R2-D2's daughter. You know what I actually thought last <laughs> night when I came up with this was like, right, uh, okay, oh. Uh, uh, was there a program a, that he did? So he did make a show called The Balloon. See, but, I knew he'd have done his research. But no Bill Oddie He's and woven. certainly no R2-D2. But what I did was I thought, I know, I'll cook up a story about how I went up in a hot air balloon with a random British celebrity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was looking through Wikipedia for British, <laughs> famous British people from the Birmingham area. And I found a bunch of people, including like Adrian Childs and all these other people. And uh, and then I, I discovered Bill Oddie. I was like, right, I'll have Bill Oddie, definitely. <laughs> and then I discovered Kenny Baker, the actor who played R2-D2. I was like, and then I was like, which one, which one? I was saying to my wife, which one shall I choose? And she was like, what? And she had no idea what I was talking about. And then in the end, I was like, in the shower this morning, I was like, I know, I'll have both. They can both be there. But R2-D2 doesn't go up. Well, you deserve those points yeah. because yeah, okay. of all that research. I I enjoyed more the story of how he got there, making it up. Yeah, than the actual, than the actual story. story. Oh, okay. The story I, of how he got there. When he asked, when he asked, like, oh, do you not want to know why he didn't go into because th- he he's like he came up with this line that he wanted, he yeah, had R2- to share. It was like a joke that he almost yeah. had. R two D two doesn't fly. Like, uh, yeah. We should have known, but honestly, he's just got such a track record. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. So the, the I get two points from that. You That's get it. two points. So that means I'm on 18, 18. you're oh, on 16, and you're 15. on 15. Correct. He's, he's speeding I've, into I've the... raced into the lead. Yeah. raced into the lead. Well, that's it now. You've, you've won. You can't... I, I think you, I've won. Yeah. Uh, Do you think this is the last Lion game? No. This but is just the, as long as we're is... keeping count. I think it's been about three or four years since... You know, last time we did this was during the lockdown. We did the lockdown Lion game. Did we? Oh, we on, did, didn't on we? Zoom. On Zoom, yeah. yeah. So that was 2020. So it's been three years. Are you including the, lo- the, the yeah. Lion game that we did on my... Because uh, we did one no, on, on my not, happy I haven't hour. included that. Did we? So this yeah. is actually the tenth Lion Game. Then, if we oh. include the one we did on Paul's show. Uh-huh. Anyway, Amber, tell us about your thing before okay. before Paul has to rush off for an interview. Okay. Um, I'm not. I've not been diagnosed, but I think I've developed uh, a fear of cows. It's called bovine phobia. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. You've not been diagnosed. I've it's not possible, gone to a doctor. It's possible to be diagnosed with that. I don't know. Like arachnophobia, do you get a diagnosis, you know, when you're scared of spiders oh, or anything I mean. like that? I do you know, know what I mean? I've not like gone somewhere and they said, oh, this is what you've got. But I feel that this is what I've got. So bovinophobia. Yeah. You have a fear of cows. Cows. Although it hasn't been confirmed by a medical phobia professional. Specialist. Phobia professional specialist. No. Okay. A fear yeah. of cows. This is good. When or- did you discover this? Well, I've suspected for some time yes. that my relationship with cows is not quite as it should be. Um, how should it be? Indifferent, by all accounts. Like, oh, look, there are some cows. Moo! Yeah. <laughs> but... <laughs> Absolutely. But they make me feel a bit scared and panicked, and and I don't like it. Um, and my family already laughs at me, because I think... Because I te- as I remind them, which is true, people get killed by cows all the time. Yeah. Cows are dangerous. Yeah, they're, they're one of the most dangerous animals in the English countryside. Exactly. Yeah, Cow- people get trampled by them. Cows are, da- absolutely. They're it's more true. dangerous than you think. It's true. I, I'm always sending them articles, normally from the Daily Mail, about people being like trampled. And so they kind of think it's this funny joke. And I kind of was like, it's a funny joke, like I'm afraid of cows. And then we've been studying recently, as you know, French artists, women artists. And one of the women artists we've been studying is Rosa Bonner. 
and she paints quite a lot of cows and i've noticed i've not even enjoyed just looking at the pictures so look what happens inside you when you look at a picture of a cow drawn by a french artist it's okay because it is just a picture but it's just i'm just like oh i don't like like i was like i don't like it i don't like these pictures i don't like it and then i was thinking i don't like cows you're repelled by the image of a cow i am repelled by an image of a cow and the thing is well we don't see cows very often Mm. you know i grew up in you grew London. up in London and now you live in Paris, more or less, now in Montreuil, but... Mm. Not know. often cows, yeah. Yeah, no cows. Don't fuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> so what yeah. is it that you're specifically scared about? Getting trampled? I, I think, um, I don't know, because even when they're behind a fence, so I went to see my friend Alice, she does live in the country, and we nearly never see cows, even though she lives in the Limousin, which is like, there's a lot of cows around there. If I see them in a car, just driving past, it's fine. But we had to walk by, walk by, not this time, but the last time, like some cows in a field. And when they're up against the fence, I, I can't, I don't want to go past them. Like I feel really, it makes me feel sick, it's, makes me feel scared, makes me feel like panicky. They're, they're, they're fleshy bovine bodies shifting <laughs> left to right as they try to, uh, um, you know, position themselves against the fence to have a look at you well, and de- the dead cold eyes as they stare at over I think it's at you this, honestly i think it's because they are so big they are so much bigger in real life i think when you are not used to seeing animals <laughs> outside of pigeons and rats they are really big and then i was i read about because i was coming on here i was thinking i can't think of a story and then i was like oh this this i was reminded of it because of the art course mm. and so then i read tried to find the name i was like is this th-? i was like is this a thing so i looked it up and then it was like it is a thing and it said it can relate you know it's saying oh you know you could feel this or that and it was like it can be like a traumatic incident mm. and i was thinking well that's funny because i've not had a traumatic really? wait a minute wait a minute really never just think back amber i want you to just think back but then to the i past. thought back i thought back and what's the traumatic incident with a cow if you're happy to share it i don't know i think that the cow anxiety was already there but when we were in argentina where a lot of cows are we went to um mm. and aren't because they all get, get killed, eaten don't they? they all get eaten, eaten. we yeah. were in this field once and there was a lot of cows mm. and i was feeling really scared and nick was laughing at me because his family are from the country if they're from the over and he knows cows and he was like saying oh don't be so ridiculous and i was started feeling really really anxious and really really scared and i was like i don't like it there's really a lot of cows and i started getting really panicked to the point that he thought it was real too and like picked up a rock and was like ready to like and then these cows started running honestly i really I, the cows it was started really, running away from no you. they were just running around and i thought we were gonna die i thought we we're gonna get trampled by cows cows are really enormous yeah. how yeah. many stomachs do cows have four because you'd only know that if you were scared of them because you'd be imagining yourself going through each All, cow every one from one back to the other th- to this stomach to that stomach is that, is got that four stomachs wait is well, you asked the question mm-hmm. is thought, that is that the fear that you'd be eaten by one of them it's, no. it's more that you'd be trampled do they have four stomachs do they not have seven 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 no, I think it's just four. Just four. It's just four, isn't it? Four is plenty, surely. Mm-hmm. They're only how, many, how many stomachs can you have? They're only eating grass. Why would they need seven stomachs? Yeah, Why would they need four? I mean, uh, good also question. a good question. Or yeah. we, also a good if question. you eat salad. Yes. Yeah, uh, mm, good point, okay. Paul. Yeah. Anyway. Have you seen those videos where, like, the... Um, the farmers like put on these ma- or like more vets they mm. put on these massive long gloves and put their hand like their entire arm like in the rear side of the cow, cow to like I don't know figure out if it's got a tumour or something if you ever, if you ever I mean I've seen all <laughs> creatures great and small are we still You're trying not- to work out where her <laughs> phobia comes from yeah that um yeah. I'm just going down the line of if she has a phobia, she would have read up a lot about cows, so she should know exactly that answer of how many stomachs they have. Because if you, you're scared of something, because if you don't like something, yeah, you, you really you research don't want it. to look at it. Yeah, you, no, but you no. don't look at it, but you research it. No, you don't, because you then do. you're thinking about then what? it. So that Amber could be like, oh, I'm really scared of cows, but research it. Oh, it's all right. They've got four stomachs. I'm fine. No, now. The something is, like that, because you, it's one of the first never... facts that you have about cows. <laughs> yeah, it is true. Hmm. The just trying is, to peer into Amber's Amber's soul here to see if I can sense any fear of cows yeah. in there but i mean she's a city girl through and through so it's quite reasonable that the sight of a bunch of large animals huge would fill you with fear plus you're why are you not scared of horses are you scared of horses great, uh, good question great question 
That is a really good question. How about giraffes and elephants? Anyway, Just horses. horses. <laughs> um, no. Hmm. Not, not afraid of horses. Why? Because they run around a lot more than cows. Yeah, and I, maybe can, it's because they're renowned not... for kicking you when you're behind them. Yes, a number of reasons. Mm. Um, I don't know, really. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think they are not in herds. You don't really see like loads of horses. And what horses don't do, which cows do, is that they're they're, they're not like side to side. You know, like if you were walking between cows, I feel like they're all squished up close together whereas horses are spread out like a horse might kick you in the face not good don't want that but i don't feel like you'd be crushed by horses crushed and trampled that's what you're scared of isn't it how do you feel when you get on line nine at 9 (laughs) a.m in the morning and there's a lot of people (laughs) mooing around that is very i mean yeah spot on are you scared of human crowds as well or is it just the bovine what do you think of bullfighting Cruel. Think? Cruel. Mm-hmm. Cruel or cool? Cruel. What about cruel. The, cruel. cruel? What about the running of the bulls in Pamplona? Morons. Mm-hmm. Morons. What, the bulls? The people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Leave the do bulls you, uh, Do you have a specific memory linked to that? Because I can understand if you're scared of cows because you've seen the people get trampled in the streets of I've, a Spanish city. I've seen them get tossed. Like, have you ever seen a um, bison? Did you ever hear those bison stories? Um, no, I don't have any Wait, what, animosity what? towards cows. No, I'm not saying animosity, I was just... Uh, bulls yeah. or any of the bovine uh, race. Happy for them to be just living. Just not near me. You just don't want to get trampled. But I, even when I'm not going to get trampled, like they are safely behind something, it still makes me feel... Mm. As a, that's, the, that's why it's an irrational part. Because even when mm. I'm like, I'm 100% safe, <laughs> these cows are not near me. I don't like it. In fact, this is just a picture of a cow and I still... <laughs> don't like it. Okay. Yeah. Mm. I've heard enough. Mm. Mm. <laughs> it sounds actually quite reasonable i have to say but is that just because anything that amber says in that voice yeah, sounds reasonable okay she could I, say anything she could talk about uh flat earth conspiracy theories and i'll be like you know what it's all, all, maybe the, the maybe flat. Flat. but uh anyway you think i think what? it's i think it's not true mm. why uh a couple of reasons one because i feel like the 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 <laughs> my brain's gone into shutdown i feel like the running of the bull situation would have come up way earlier really yeah because mm-hmm. that's like the main I, I i feel like that would have come up in the story like in a thing of like oh i watched a video about this and that's like completely scared the shit out of me mm. number two mm. there was a slight reaction where she took a while to answer a question. I can't remember which one it was, but it was kind of like, ah, uh-huh. hmm. I tell you, it wasn't to, the to question. waste a bit of time to think about the answer. It wasn't the question about the stomachs because she got that one instantly, didn't she? Amazingly yeah. enough. Mm. Mm, so, but you think there was a bit of pausing? There, I, I don't know. I feel, I feel like it's, I feel like it's false. I feel like we might have heard about it before. It just it, through our friendship. I feel like this is a recent occurrence. And that Amber's maybe realised only this summer or something that she has a phobia of cows. Previously, it was just a, 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 a an unnerving feeling when in in a farmyard situation. Like I don't feel right. I don't know what it is. Is it the shit under my my shoes, <laughs> or is it these cows? Uh, it's only recently that it materialised in your brain, and you you realised oh, I have a phobia of cows. Mm. Now finally. I can move on with my life. I think she was thinking about a lie to tell. Yeah. And she was just going through some of the things that she's done recently, saw the, remembered the paintings of the cows and was like, oh, I know. I'll tell them that I'm scared of cows. They'll never believe that. Or they will. I don't know. Um, You think it's... I'm going to go, I'm going to go lie. And I'm willing to say lie, which means I'm willing to go last in this competition now. Wow. Gone from first to last within 20 minutes. Yeah. That's the lion yeah. game for you. One yeah. minute you're flying high. Next minute. Next thing you're right well, at the One bottom. minute you're flying lie. <laughs> flying lie and then you're hying fly or I don't mm. um, Hero I to zero. I think it's true because, I don't know, just I'm mm. convinced by your, to- your, your accent. <laughs> <laughs> your whatever you... <laughs> The, 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 that's why we have the accent the, the British the, is because yeah. everyone goes oh you must that be must really be nice true. people you must yeah. be really oh, clever dear. and intelligent and um, so yeah because of your accent privilege I just believe everything you say okay um, well uh, it's not true 
Um, yeah, hey, hey. Oh, no. You got a point. I didn't get a point. Oh, no. Come on. But listen, I'm going to qualify it because thank you, Luke, for believing me. Um, because while it's not true, it is true that my family do laugh at me because I do think cows, not I think, I know cows are dangerous and they're always laughing at me and I'm like, cows are dangerous. And I did go through a big field in Argentina and I was really scared because those cows are running around and I was like, is this how I die? Are we going to die? And Nick was laughing at me and then I was like, you're not laughing now, are you? When 20 giant cows are running in our direction because I thought we were going to die. So I can see cows, I can look at pictures of cows, but I do not think that you should be messing with cows. They're dangerous. You have a rational fear a of cows. A rational fear of not... cows, rather than an irrational fear. Thank you. That's a good way of putting it. Okay. So what are the final scores then? Well, so Amma got, gets one. I got one. And you get and one. I get one. And we got, got one from your game and one from this game. Hold on. So you, we, were, we were level just now. Oh, were we? We had 15? Uh, I had a you had 18. You're, had 18. you're in the lead. I've now got one more since the beginning of this game, so I'm on 17. Yeah. You have one point, two points. So you're, we're a level, I think, on six. Because no, you started I'm six, on 14. I'm 14, so I've got 16. 16. Oh, and I'm on 17. 17. Okay. 16, 17, 18. I'm okay. the winner. Nice. Yeah. Oh, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Woo-hoo. No, the thing that gave it away for me, the first one, was when we yeah. were like, oh, do you, are you scared of horses? I'm not and, scared of horses. No, I know, but, but, but before it was... But it, when you were like oh good question you said something and you laughed way more than you should have and I know it was like a delay to like find a response of do I say I'm I'm scared of horses or not because otherwise this is going to give something yeah. away and there was something in the in, in the way that you is you it? were like ha 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 yeah um, and then exactly and I was like oh there we go there's a bit of falter saw her brain moving good job good job he's good at the lying game I'm good at detecting lies I do like to try and think of a lie though because otherwise it doesn't feel like the lying game no I know it's and just I, the talking game, isn't it? And I, but I thought about this before because I remember seeing some cows and thinking and and saying to everyone, "Be ca- cows, very dangerous. Oh, look out the window at those killers." And everyone was like, "This is the first time hearing about cows." I mean, obviously, oh, I knew that. Well, anything big being dangerous, like a whale is dangerous, like an elephant is dangerous. House. Yeah, but I've never thought. I've people never... just think cows are nothing. And like, um, when we were in, when <laughs> we were in, nothing they... pathetic little cat. <laughs> Absolutely. But they're massive. Don't waste my time with these species. But they're so big. They're so... Yeah. Oh, they oh, are so big. When we went to um, Nepal and there was these... You know, they're like... They're kind of like buffalo, I suppose. You know, the big Have you seen yak? Have you seen yak. Canadian moose? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, I mean, they, not in real life, wait. but they are gigantic. Gigantic. And I the, thought, one of them, they are, I think, the most dangerous animal in Canada, the moose. Probably. Even more than a bear. Oh, they really? Are yeah, because if well, a moose sees yeah, you. The moose are like, they live, they the bears are in, they're not in cities. Moose just walk around cities and they are massive. Yeah. I had no idea until I saw a video of like a moose being like twice the height of a car. I'm yeah. Like, and they oh. stomp on stuff. It's, their, they, they're outrageous. They, they stamp on things and completely obliterate them. And they get drunk as well. Yeah. What? They drink um, fermented. fermented fruit and often reel around the place totally <laughs> wasted. <laughs> yeah. I think also the animals which are prey animals, we can underestimate and think, oh, they're not dangerous, but they do need to survive. Yes. And so they've got some pretty good defences, you know, and uh, yeah, anyway, but... Um, like hippos, the way that hippos are the most dangerous animals in apparently Africa. Apparently zebras are very dangerous. Well, yeah, they, it's, a, it's a massive horse that can just kick you in the head. You know, normally they... they they're dealing with crocodiles and stuff, and then there's just us, and the most so flimsy. useless, pathetic, flimsy, <laughs> naked monkeys just walking around. And a ca- all a zebra needs to do is just kick us with its hoof. Have oh, you yeah, ever seen a monkey? There was this monkey with alopecia, and it is just so it was like you know, no hair, no hair. ripped. They are just all muscles. Yeah. Monkeys are terrifying. They are terrifying. Monkeys are really terrifying scary. Terrifying yeah. creatures. And you, they, I remember this monkey jumped out of us in Thailand. And it was small. I mean, I'm little, but it was small. But I was like, that monkey could have me any day. Yeah. That monkey. Just, it was just like... Just, I just, just rip your, pe- I've rip been your going face off. A, a, I was in, uh, going down a... Um, a rabbit hole on TikTok. Not literally. No. You're just on TikTok. Just on TikTok. Because rabbits uh, are okay. Yeah, rabbits are okay. But well. watching a, a gorilla eating fruit and vegetable, just sitting there, just going, Hurm, like take, destroying a cucumber, just going, Hurm, and just loving it. It was just, it was, and then a red pepper, Hurm, 
doesn't catch, doesn't give a fuck. It's just rinsing. It's just, it's like ASMR almost. This this year, right? So this summer holiday, we were in um, the Loire Valley. We mm-hmm. went to the Parc Beauval. Is that what it's called? Oh yeah, I went there. The zoo, yeah. Yeah, we went there. And did you see the gorillas? Yes. Oh my god! I felt they could have jumped over that. Yeah. It did not feel very safe. Absolutely huge. The one that I saw, it was like it was like a Volkswagen. Yeah. It was- <laughs> Absolutely massive. Such a reference. And, and first of all, it was it was lying underneath a board, and then it came out, and it was like, oh my, f- it's fucking huge. And yeah. it sat there, right? It sat there over this other side of this water, just staring at everyone. And every now and then, like this human body language would come in, mm. like it, it went like this at one point. You know, it's like, my God, it's exactly like a person. Yeah. Just the way that a person just like scratches their face. Yeah, like yeah you we look in their eyes, they look very human. Like if you just look at their eyes and you forget like the, the yeah. massive jaw, like you forget the rest of the physicality, you just go, fuck. These are, like, it's just like a bloke. I had a this, huge bloke. I had the opposite reaction when I saw the pandas Yeah, there at that zoo. I yes. was like, is that only the size of them? <laughs> <laughs> They're so small. That's not in the gift shop. No, like the real pandas. They're called giant pandas. Not fucking giant. They're quite big. <laughs> they're not quite. quite. They're the size of a human. I thought a giant panda. Well, did you think they were? I thought they were like polar bear sized. <laughs> what? How did you think? Haven't you big- seen them? <laughs> Every video, bear. every video that you see online of a panda, there is not a human next to it. So you don't, don't get the size. No, there's loads of videos with human, humans loads. next to them. No, there's not. There <laughs> are pandas the size you are, and they were eyes like a, that must hum- be the- a human. Yeah, <laughs> that's not human. very big to be called a giant panda. I mean, in the panda world, I'm a giant. Well, compared to a red panda, yeah, but compared to other bears, like gri- bears. grizzlies are the height of this room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought right. I thought a panda was going to be at least on the same height as a grizzly. I thought pandas were not bears, though. Yeah. Well, are they not? <laughs> I don't know, listeners. You can tell us: Are pandas actually bears, or are they not bears? What are what they? Are they are fish? <laughs> Well, I don't know. There's... I don't know. Are they not a sort okay. of... Okay. Do I have to answer that yes, question now? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, I need to answer that question now quickly. Is a panda a bear? Are uh, pandas bears? This is the most fascinating the part of the panda, episode. Also known as the panda bear or simply panda is a bear native... To south it of is central a China. It's a ba- it, is it is a bear. A bear. It is a bear. Aww. Okay. Well, I'm glad we sorted that out. <laughs> Thanks, Siri. And also <gasps> glad that I won the lion game. Correct. Yes, you did. This time. And I'm really pleased. Well done, Luke, that you lied. Mm-hmm. Well done. Your lie was not only a great lie you'd obviously gone on a whole journey and you really spun it for us really enjoyed that he Paul? researched it more than i researched my university degree I, absolutely <laughs> <laughs> absolutely yeah. paul uh, i'm glad you uh, are not drinking well done yes it's, uh, good great news keep it up i'm uh, glad that you're not scared of cows yeah although i don't like them to be fair i think as, as we said it's a rational fear a rational fear of, of stay cows. away from cows people yes. so listeners that has been the lion game the ninth or is it tenth incarnation <laughs> of the lion game thank you very much if you enjoyed it uh, let us know in the comments section what did you think did you think we were lying did you think we were telling the truth uh, it's been fun it's been emotional <laughs> guys thank you so much paul's got to go and be interviewed. I, I mean you guys can keep chatting if you want but i have to run off to uh, an interview for to do promotion for my show. Okay, and the show is at the Z- Le Zenith de Paris, the Zenith. Uh, it's on the 6th of January. It's my this, final ever bilingual show. This is a huge venue. It is. Which huge. has how many people inside? Well, the configuration that we have got it on is uh, 4,100. 4,100. Wow. 100. 100. That is a lot of people. It is. It can go up to 5, how 7. Are, t- are, are tickets on sale? It's not great. Wait a minute. When is it? It's on the January the 6th. Okay, I don't know when this is going to be published. It, mm, well, Publish it, it before. It's going to obviously have to be published. Well, someone's, it, someone's going to get bumped. Someone's going to get Someone bumped. else is going to get bumped into January. Well, uh, if okay. it, it, it might have already happened, in which case, uh, thanks for coming, everyone. Well, uh, 6th <laughs> of January, January yes. right? The tickets are on your website, paultaylorcomedy.com. Yeah. Yes. Uh, at, it's at the Zenith. If you're in the area of the Zenith, which is near Paris... Then, uh, I mean, it's in Paris. It's in Paris. Then come down. Who else is performing on that show, Paul? Taylor? I don't know. You don't know? Uh, probably no one. Really? Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know. All right. I don't know Splendid. what the situation is. Okie dokie. Um, yeah. So come and see. If you want to come and see Paul, his last show. Ever bilingual show. Last ever, sh- ever bilingual show. Bilingual, yeah. It will be, I'll still be doing shows in English yeah, and absolutely. in French, but yeah. just not in both. Then come on down to the Zenith. Zen- the Zenith. It's a, the Zenith. PaulTaylorComedy.com for tickets. Um, All right. Okay, then. Great. 
Nice one. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. You want to say goodbye? Bye. 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 That was a lie, by the Bye. way. I'm not performing at all at the Zenith. It was part of the Lion game. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a lie. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> okay, so here we are at the end. Or I'd say at the end, it's not the end because there's probably quite a long time now before the actual episode uh, finishes. But that's certainly the end of the conversation. That's the end of Lion Game number nine. Or in fact, Lion Game number 10, if you if you count uh, the one that we did on Paul's podcast uh, years ago. The sort of long lost uh, version of the Lion Game, which if you find Paul Taylor's Happy Hour live podcast... I can't remember which episode it was, but it's the one with Amber and me playing the Lion Game. Anyway, um, so there you go. How was that for you, everyone? Now, I, I was th I was listening back to that from the point of view of a learner of English, thinking, oh, is this maybe too difficult? I don't know. I thought to myself, mm, mm, maybe I was interrupting a little bit too much, making too many comments, I might have made things a bit complicated. I don't know. I got a, a bit overexcited in this episode and I couldn't help butting in with my own comments and jokes here and there. Apologies if that made it a little bit harder uh, to keep up with everything. Um, I'm always trying to, you know, I'm always thinking about these things. I'm always trying to get the balance right in my episodes between keeping things clear and simple and also keeping things entertaining you know? Uh, but anyway, I know what it's like to listen to a busy conversation between people in another language. It can be tiring. It can be tricky. But nevertheless, you made it. You you made it this far. Well done. And uh, I'm assuming that you are not a skeleton and that you are still breathing and the rest of it. Okay. It, of course, it depends on your level of English. Who knows? Maybe there are maybe there are skeletons in different parts of the world. Never mind all that stuff about skeletons. Anyway, so right. I said before that first I would summarise the stories that you just heard with the assumption that if you hear me summarising them now clearly, uh, right, that that will help. So let me do that first. And then I've got a vocabulary list. I picked out some bits of vocab that you heard throughout that conversation. And I'm going to kind of bring them back to your attention and clarify them a bit in a similar way to how I do in premium episodes. So a little flavour of LEP premium here. So first of all, Paul's story, Paul Taylor's story. So he went first and Paul told us about, well, basically the crux of his story was that he, he started drinking alcohol again after he had a bad show in Portugal. He relapsed, he fell off the wagon and started drinking alcohol again. So after his bad show in Portugal, he fell off the wagon, and I will explain that. It's in my vocab list, but I think you're starting to understand what that means now. He fell off the wagon, and he got back on the booze. That's back on the alcohol. So in his words, he got shit-faced, a lovely expression, meaning just he got very drunk. He got wasted, right? He got shit-faced, <laughs> and despite having a horrible hangover the next day, oh God, I've got a hangover. Oh dear, I feel sick. So despite having a hot, don't drink alcohol, everyone. Okay, it's te especially don't drink it uh, a lot. Well, you can do what you want, of course. But anyway, I think you're probably able to look after yourself. You don't need health advice from me, do you? I don't know. Maybe you do. Um, anyway, so he got really drunk. And despite having a horrible hangover the next day in which he was sick over and over again, I know it's a lovely story, uh, he then continued drinking again. That was his story. Now, there was actually a point of contention here. It's still not entirely clear to me whether Paul broke the rules of the lying game, because you did hear me say at the beginning of the conversation, I laid down the rules and I said, if any detail, I said something along the lines of this, if any detail of your story is a lie, then the entire thing is a lie. Now, I have to say that Paul included, so he said, I, got, I, I drank beer again, and then I continued drinking. And he even, I think, agreed or he, he, he confirmed that he was still kind of drinking regularly even now. So that part of it was definitely a lie. The first part of the story was true. He did get drunk after that show and he was ill. But the 
but he did not then continue drinking alcohol. So it's actually a little bit uh, contentious, this one. But um, so Amber and I, we guessed that the story was true and Paul said that it was true. In fact, you know, to be honest, the referee's decision here worked in Amber and my favour, uh, right? It worked in our favour because we got the points. But however, there was a point of contention because although the first part of the story was true, he did fall off the wagon after that show in Portugal. Not literally, it's just an idiom. Uh, in fact, the other part that he then continued drinking again after that was not true. Um, he quickly went back to not drinking after that one exceptional evening. Thank goodness, right? Uh, right, folks? It's better when Paul is off the booze. He looks good. He's in a better place mentally, physically. So anyway, that was, was his story true or a lie? Now, as I said before, to be completely honest, according to my rules, which is if one detail is a lie, the whole story is a lie, this story was actually a lie. Don't tell Paul. And therefore, Amber and I didn't deserve to get one point. But anyway, that's in the past now, right? That's, that's all done now. It's done and dusted. You know, and in that moment, the referee, and that was actually me, even though I'm, I was also playing the game. Yeah, no conflict of, conflict of interest. No, it's fine. So anyway, the referee said that Amber and I were right. So we got the points. And then we just moved on quickly because we simply didn't have time to sit around debating it anymore. So the end result was Amber and I got one point each. And the scores after round one were Amber one, Paul zero, Luke one. And you can sit around arguing about VAR. <laughs> there is no VAR in the Lion game. VAR listeners is, was it video assisted referee? It's a kind of video assisted uh, referee ass assistant thing from football and it makes everyone argue all the time but never mind the dis referee's decision is final even if the referee is completely biased and <laughs> and you know there's a full conflict of interest anyway so that's what happened with paul's story what about my story so luke's story um then it was my turn and by the way, I'm reading from some notes here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm reading from some notes, which I've written in advance. I'll put these notes on the page for this episode on my website. So if you want to, if you're thinking, is Luke reading from some, some, some notes or something? Yes. And you'll find them on the page for this episode on my website. Uh, just go to teacherluke.co.uk slash episodes and find 866, the Lion Game number nine. And there, if you click on that, it'll take you to the page for this episode, and that's where you'll find all of these notes and things I'm reading from, including the vocabulary list, which is coming. So my story, then it was my turn, and I said that I once took a hot air balloon ride with Bill Oddie. You know what a hot air balloon is? One of those big balloons. <laughs> they get filled up with hot air, and they float off across the countryside. Really great, really cool sort of special way of traveling. Really extraordinary. So I, I, it was, I said that I took a hot air balloon ride with Bill Oddy, right, who that I would be surprised if you know who Bill Oddy is, but he's a, he's a kind of a household name in the UK. Everyone in the UK knows Bill Oddy. He's a, he used to be a comedian, um, very beloved comedian from a TV show called The, the Goodies. And then he became a, a TV presenter and he's also a famous uh, nature lover and ornithologist. He's a bird watcher. He's mostly famous for being a TV presenter, presenting nature programs uh, on the TV in the UK. He's not really on TV anymore. Um, also, Alan Partridge, that comedy character that I love so much, often talks about Bill Oddie. They're friends in Alan Partridge's world. Anyway, so I took a hot air balloon ride with Bill Oddie, this random British TV celebrity, and R2-D2's daughter. So R2-D2, this is one of the, the droids from Star Wars, right? The blue and white one. It looks like a dustbin. It's got a domed head and it goes... <laughs> it makes all these kind of noises. <laughs> right, that's R2-D2. So I took a, b a balloon ride with Bill Oddie and R2-D2's daughter. And you might be thinking, what? R2-D2, what do you mean R2-D2's daughter? Well, I meant... 
the daughter of the actor who played R2-D2. And you might be thinking, wait a minute, an actor played R2-D2? What, like a robot actor? What? No, no, no. Um, as I said in the conversation, there was actually a real person inside the R2-D2 kind of costume, right? In, inside R2-D2, there was actually a person. So um, some of the shots in Star Wars, when you see R2-D2, it's a model. It's a remote controlled model. And then other shots, like where R two D two slot, like moving around in, a, in, a, in a, um, not 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 rolling, but just kind of like wiggling around or something, and turning his head. That's um, that's actually a man inside there, a small man inside there, and his, his, the actor's name is Kenny Baker, um, who unfortunately is no longer with us. So rest in peace, Kenny Baker, um, iconic Star Wars actor. Anyway, so I took a balloon ride with Bill Oddie and R2-D2's daughter. So that's Kenny Baker's daughter. Obviously, Kenny Baker did other things. He didn't just do R2-D2, but that's his most famous role. So Kenny Baker was there too, but didn't actually go up in the balloon because he said, and I quote, "Now R2-D2 doesn't fly. That's what I said. He didn't go up in the balloon because it R2, apparently R2-D2 doesn't fly, he said. So in my story... I said that upon hearing this, when I heard that when I heard Kenny Baker say this, my brother and I were both a bit confused and we looked at each other because R2D2 definitely flies in the Star Wars films like a lot. Right? Uh, in all manner of spacecraft. He's in loads of different spaceships. He definitely flies. But anyway, that was my story. Amber and Paul both assumed that this story was completely true. They just instantly assumed it was true. And this is for a few reasons. So one, I almost always tell the truth in this game. So they just expected me to tell the truth again. Number two, the story was way too specific and weird to be made up. Like they just underestimated me. They just thought that's too obscure. There's no way you would just think of that. That's clearly something that happened. And also because they know that my dad worked at the BBC, so they thought it was probably quite possible. The names, the, the celebrities that I chose were so kind of random that it just seemed to, it, it could only be true really, because why would I make that up? Why would I construct such as odd, such specific things? And three, they just didn't press me with more questions. They should have investigated more. If they'd been more inquisitive, I'm sure that they would have discovered that my story had no actual substance to it. In any case, Amber and Paul were both fooled uh, and and they guessed it was true, but uh, uh, no, no, no. Uh, I made it up completely. Uh, to be fair, it is based on a true story. Uh, once upon a time, my dad did produce a TV series for BBC Midlands. So that's the local BBC TV uh, channel or BBC TV sort of uh, coverage, um, BBC Midlands. He did make a TV show called The Balloon, in which a presenter visited different parts of the Midlands in England in a hot air balloon. <laughs> Amber said, oh my God, it sounds terrible. What she means is that it's very typical of local TV. And, and again, I think I mentioned Alan Partridge. It does sound like something from the world of Alan Partridge, definitely. Bill Oddie visits um, different... B Bill Oddie visits Warwickshire. No, like Bill Oddie visits different towns and counties in the Midlands in a hot air balloon. It definitely sounds like an idea that Alan Partridge would have. Um, but in, it wasn't actually Bill Oddie. It was, in reality, it was presented by um, a newsreader uh, from Birmingham uh, called Sue Beardsmore. And neither Bill Oddie nor R2-D2 actor Kenny Baker or his daughter were involved in any way. And Kenny Baker never said, R2-D2 doesn't fly. He never said that. Um, in fact, James and I were allowed to take a trip in the balloon one day at the end of the filming of the TV show. And when they still had the, you know, the, they, st they were still able to use the balloon for a day. And it's one of the most memorable experiences of my life. Just going up in a hot air balloon was fantastic. It was a lovely summer's day and it was clear and blue sky. It was wonderful. Now, it would have been even more memorable if R2-D2 or even, you know, just the act. I mean, I, you know, I keep saying R2-D2, that's not fair 
because it's not like Kenny Baker would go around in the R2-D2 costume in his normal life. <laughs> if I'd gone up in a hot air balloon with literally R2-D2, that would have been, yes, extremely memorable. But anyway, no, that didn't happen. But anyway, I got two points for this because both Amber and Paul fell for it completely. So the final scores after this round, Amber one, Paul zero, Luke three. Then Amber's story... Amber said that she had developed a phobia of cows, right? Cows are these large farm animals. Uh, they, you know, we take their milk, right? Um, we use their meat for beef. Sorry, vegetarians and vegans. I understand. I understand how you feel. Anyway, I'm just explaining what cows are. So she said that she developed a phobia of cows. Moo, right, that's cows say moo in English. A phobia of cows, which is known as bovinophobia. Okay, bovine is like the Latin word relating to cows. Bovinophobia. So Amber developed bovino bovinophobia, she said. And this was a result of several experiences she had with her family on holiday where they encountered cows in fields, including one time in Argentina, one particularly memorable moment in Argentina. And Amber felt very scared. And since then, she's realised that she actually can't stand cows at all. So this is more than just a reasonable fear. It's actually a, a, an unreasonable irrational fear. She can't even look at some paintings of cows drawn by French artists, uh, which she saw during her recent art history course. Just looking at the paintings of the cows was too much for her, and she found their bovine faces strangely repellent. She hasn't been officially diagnosed as suffering from bovinophobia, but she believes she has it. But was this true? Well, Port... Paul thought, no, she, he thought it was a lie. Can't remember his reason for it. And I said, yes, I said, uh, I thought it was true. And in fact, it was not true. It was a lie. Uh, although Amber is definitely wary of cows, like she's a bit unsure about them. She doesn't have a phobia of them. Remember, a phobia is the irrational fear of something. Being very scared of something when there's really no reason to be scared of it. But Amber's fear of cows is completely reasonable and logical, considering they do actually kill quite a lot of people each year by trampling them to death. Trampling, that's another word that's going to come up in my list in a moment. But she's not scared of pictures of cows. She's not scared of cows when they are on the other side of a strong fence. So her fear is not irrational or extreme, which is how a phobia is defined. So the final scores there is that Amber got two, Paul got one, and I got three points at the end of the game. So I won the lying game. Victory was mine. Oh, the, glo the glory, the triumph. Um, okay, let's look at some language then. This is vocabulary mainly. Okay, we're going to look at my vocabulary list here. And as I said before, this is a little taste of Luke's English Podcast Premium. Just a tiny taste because I'm not going to give you the full detail here. Uh, which is what I, I do in premium episodes. I go into a lot of detail, but I'm not going to go into full detail here. And you're not also going to get all the peripheral things that you get with premium episodes, like extra examples, memory exercises, pronunciation exercises, speaking questions. I won't be doing all that stuff. It's just like a very, a very lean um, version. So I've got my vocab list. Oh, it's quite fairly long. I'm going to go through this pretty quickly now. So you treated us to lunch, said Amber. You treated us to lunch. So I bought Amber and Paul lunch. I treated them to lunch. If you treat someone to something, you give something to someone as like a kind of a special, a special thing, like maybe a reward because they've been good, or you give it to them. It's like a special gift or uh, because they've because you want them to feel special in some way. For example, it's your birthday. I'm going to treat you to dinner because it's your birthday. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for your contribution. I think I'm going to treat you to something nice. Here are some here are some tickets to the to the show tonight. To treat you can also treat yourself to something. You know, I've just been working really hard recently, so I thought that this afternoon I would just treat myself to. Um, an afternoon at the cinema, and I'm just going to sit back and just watch a great film. I'm going to treat myself to a piece of chocolate cake. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, Paul said, it's one of the funnest things to do, doing the line game on the podcast. It's one of the funnest things to do. So you might have thought funnest. So fun, fun is, is a noun, right? To have fun, a lot of fun. It is so much fun. But fun can be an adjective as well, okay? And the, sup- the comparative form of fun would be fun, funner, and then the superlative is funnest. But um, you might also just use the noun form, right? It's one of the most fun things to do. You see? So if it's a noun, we'd say the most fun. I, we, I had, this was the most fun I have ever had, right? Or this is one of the funnest things to do, meaning things that is most fun. Okay? Uh, next, um, I said, is this true or is it made up bullcrap? Okay, now I chose to use the word bullcrap because for me, it's just like a funny word. But it really, it's the same word as bullshit. Bullshit is more offensive than bullcrap because shit is slightly, in terms of the offensiveness or rudeness level, shit is higher than crap, although they are the same meaning. Bullcrap means bullshit, which means nonsense. So basically, is this true or is this nonsense? Is this just made up? If something's made up, it means it's been created. Right, imagined in this case. Like if you make up a story, it means you just create a story which is not real. I just made it up. If something is made up, it also could be a lie. Like for example, I say to my daughter, where's your, uh, where's your scarf? And she says, oh, uh, yeah, a wolf stole it. And I said, did you just, is that made up? Did you just make that up? No, 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 really a wolf stole it. Of course it's not true. Because in, you know, <laughs> she's six. So she does make up quite a lot of sort of blatant lies, um, which is kind of normal for a five or six year old child to do that. Hopefully when she's 23, she won't still be doing that. Fingers crossed. Um, Next thing was I, um, Paul talking about his show, the show that went badly in Portugal. I can't remember which which city or town in Portugal it was, but for some reason that just it was a terrible show, and he felt really awful. He had to do it for an hour and a half, and no one was laughing, and there were children in the front row, and oh, that sounds awful. Uh, but it was he said it was a rough show, rough, R O U G H, rough, rough just means kind of like. In this context, it just means difficult, tough, unpleasant, right? A rough experience. It was a rough day. Oh, God, I had a really rough day today. It was a really rough show, okay? Just difficult, unpleasant, hard. Um, we also say rough area, a rough area. So be careful of that part of the city. It's kind of a bit of a rough area. So watch out. You know, don't, don't get your phone out in that area it's a bit rough around there you you know you might it might get stolen or something so just be careful of your belongings it's a bit of a rough area so you can have a rough day a rough show it's a rough area meaning a dangerous area in that sense i had a bit of a rough night last night Ah, meaning i didn't sleep very well so rough means like difficult hard in terms of a place it means sort of a bit dangerous not very nice. Yeah. Next, uh, Paul said, I relapsed from alcohol. To relapse, to relapse. To relapse means, I mean, in used, used in the context of things like addiction or addictive behavior, if you relapse, it means you, you go back to the thing, to the bad habit that you were doing before. So when you are trying to, when you're trying to give up, when you're trying to quit, okay, you, you're, 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 you're trying to stay sober, but then something bad happens, you have a rough day, and you, you, you're in a moment of weakness, you relapse, meaning you go back to the alcohol or go back to whatever it is that you're trying to stop. Whatever damaging behavior you've been trying to stop, you kind of go back to it, you relapse. Paul said, I got completely shit-faced. There's that lovely expression again, I said, ironically. Shit-faced, uh, you know, it just means very drunk. Other words, wasted. Um, there's, there's so many different words for this. I mean, wasted is probably like the one that comes to mind. 
Um, yeah, okay. Like, really pissed. Uh, wasted. Let's just stick with that. Shit-faced. And I said to him, so you fell off the wagon. So here's that idiom, to fall off the wagon. I think you've worked out by now that it means to relapse. Okay? If you fall off the wagon, it means you've relapsed. Spe almost always relating to alcohol consumption. Okay? Um, all right. Little health warning. Always uh, be very responsible when you drink alcohol. And I don't recommend drinking alcohol to excess in any case. There's a little health warning sponsored by uh, the uh, National Health Service. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, to fall off the wagon. So the origin, I understand the origin of this expression is that uh, the wagon refers to a water wagon a wagon that carried water around the place. A wagon is a sort of a four-wheeled wooden vehicle that would be pulled by horses or, or other animals, right? So like an old-fashioned vehicle made of wood. That's a wagon used for transporting things around or transporting people around, okay? A wagon. Uh, and a water wagon would have been a wagon that carried water around the place. So, you know, the idea of if you're on the wagon, it means you're drinking water. That's basically what that means. Uh, and if you fall off the wagon, it means you're no longer drinking water, right? Okay. I mean, the origin of these idioms is never very, uh, never very, uh, never a very satisfying story, is it? You know, on the wagon, like on a water wagon, you don't have to be on a wagon to drink water. No, no, it's the wagon transported the water. Yeah, but why would you be? You don't have to climb on the wagon to drink the water. You just take the water and go anywhere, can't you? It doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't really. It doesn't really make sense. So don't worry about the story. But if you needed to have an explanation, that's what it refers to: the water wagon. Uh, if you fall off the water wagon, it means you are no longer drinking water. You're not back to drinking alcohol again. You've relapsed. You fell off the wagon. Okay. And we don't say get, we don't really say to be on the wagon. You don't really say, oh, uh, how are you doing, uh, Paul? Are you still on the wagon? You might say that, but it's much, 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 much more likely that you'll only use that expression with fall off the wagon. That's the idiom to fall off the wagon. So whenever it's whenever we refer to the wagon in this way, it's always to fall off it, not to climb on it or to be on it. Maybe occasionally, but the vast majority of the time people are saying fall off the wagon. Um, I said uh, about Paul, I said he still looks quite svelte. Svelte. S-V-E-L-T. Svelte. Uh, uh, wait a minute. S-V-E-L-T-E. -E. S-V-E-L-T-E. E, svelte. Um, interesting word. Um, it's basically, so this is, this is a word we use in English. It, it means like uh, slender and elegant. So it's slim and it's a kind of positive word, slim and elegant. And if you've seen, you know, pictures of Paul, um, if you've seen pictures of Paul recently, he does look good. You know, he's definitely lost weight, the weight that he had a couple of years ago. Um, and it's, he looks good. So he does look slender and elegant in his kind of, you know, black uh, T-shirt and so on. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm just trying to find or origin of this because it doesn't sound like an English word, really, does it? Okay, it's from, from French, it seems, from Italian, svelto. There you go. Uh, like a lot of our words... Origin, you know, it has its origin in French and, and Italian as well. Um, anyway, svelte, svelte, slim, basically. Slim and attractive. I said, he's, he's looking quite, he still looks quite svelte. You do look good in, you look in good shape. If you're in good shape, it means you're in good physical condition. Okay? And similarly, you can be in bad shape. It means you're in bad condition. Paul said, I needed to stop. I needed to get fit. Fit means that you are not just looking good, but you're actually healthy. Your body is in good shape. Okay, so you go to the gym, you work out, you do cardio because you need to keep fit. If you need to run up some stairs and you get to the top and... <laughs> wait a minute. <sighs> it's like, oh, you're not very fit, are you? It's like... <sighs> if someone does that after climbing, like... 10 steps, they're not very fit. 
right? But if you up the stairs, all the way up to the top, six flights of stairs, and you get to the top, okay, I'm all right. You're fit, aren't you? You're in good shape to be fit and to get fit, meaning to get in good shape. Fattening, that's the next word. Alcohol is very fattening, especially beer um, full of gluten, right? I think, right? Isn't it? Uh, wait a minute, is beer full of gluten? Full of gluten. Most beer contains gluten. All right, that's good enough for me. Um, it's because it's brewed using gluten containing grains like barley, wheat, rye, you know? Okay, so most beer is full of gluten. Uh, it's quite fattening. So fat, we know, F-A-T. Uh, fatten, to fatten is someone, is to make them fat. Um, normally, it's, we use the adjective fattening. Like, is this food fattening? If food, if a certain food is fattening, it means it makes you fat. Fish and chips is quite fattening food. Like a lot of those traditional English dishes are quite fattening. Fish and chips, pie, you know, stuff like that. Um, and beer is definitely very fattening, right? So if, if you're trying to lose weight, avoid fattening foods. Is this food very fattening? High in calories, fattening. You know what the word fat is? Fatty, fatty food is food that contains a lot of fat. That's fatty food. Fattening food is food that makes you fat. All right, next. All right, it's gonna get a little bit disgusting now. Um, Paul said, I vomited, I threw up. So I'm just gonna add different words for, for, for the same thing here. To vomit, to throw up, to be sick, and to puke, they all mean the same thing. Blah! Disgusting. <laughs> Vomit, throw up, be sick, or to puke. All right? To be sick can mean to throw up. I think I'm going to be sick. Right? <laughs> okay. Let's move swiftly on. Uh, I said to Paul, you gave up drinking. You quit booze. Booze. B-O-O-Z-E. This is quite. This was quite a boozy episode, wasn't it? Actually, quite a lot of talk of booze. Uh, but anyway, you quit booze. Booze is alcohol. Alcoholic drinks, beer, wine, spirits. You know, cider, all those things. That's booze. Okay, right. I said he's back on the booze now. It's a slippery slope. Right, it's a slippery slope. So if so I've, I explained this one in in. P56 part five, this phrase came up and I explained it in full detail. If you talk about a slippery slope, it's basically a, a thing which will lead to much worse things eventually. In the same way that a slope is a gradient, if you're on, if you go on, if you go on the slope, you will slip down it, right? You'll slip down it. So it's a, a slippery slope, which will take you down to the bottom, which is bad. So uh, drinking alcohol, again, is a slippery slope. A slippery slope to what? A slippery slope to, you know, the same drinking habits that he had before, him, you know, not looking after himself um, and putting on weight again and um, all those bad things. So it's a slippery slope, right? Like don't smoke even a, cig a cigarette or two. It's not, no, no, it's a slippery slope because you'll be completely addicted to nicotine. Um, Okay, like basically you, when you say that something is a slippery slope, you're, you're, you're giving a warning saying don't do this habit because ultimately it will result in much worse things eventually. Um, next, a year of sobriety. Sobriety. Amber said, Adam was not the most supportive of your sobriety. Adam is Paul's manager and friend. Sobriety is the, is the state of being sober. If you're sober, it means you're not drunk and you're not drinking alcohol, especially not not drunk, right? Someone who's not drunk is sober. It's like, are you are you okay to drive? Yep. Yeah, don't worry. I'm completely sober. I'm the designated driver. I have not touched a drink. I'm I'm so sober right now. Really, it's really been a wonderful evening, spending the evening with all of you, drunk people. Six hours it's been, and I am the most, I feel like the most sober I've ever been in my life. So please get in the car and please be quiet and please do not be sick in the back of my car. 
That's the unlucky person who has to be sober, the designated driver on a night out. Uh, anyway, so, to, to be sober and uh, a sobriety and sobriety is the state of being sober. So Paul had a year of sobriety and uh, Adam was not the most supportive of his sobri sobriety. Adam maybe occasionally was like, go on, Paul, have a drink. So he wasn't that supportive of his sobriety. Um, hair of the dog, hair of the dog. It's another sort of idiom, this one. Have you ever heard this before? So this is... This is an odd thing. So if you have drunk too much and you have a hangover, so how do you get rid of the hangover? Well, one theory, one idea is that you have another drink in the morning or at least in the afternoon or something. You have another drink the next day. And if you have another drink, then the hangover goes away. It's a way to cure your hangover. And I mean, to be fair, this is an extremely slippery slope, this habit of if you have a, take another drink the next day, that is a slippery slope to some very bad and very unhealthy habits, I have to say. But nevertheless, the phrase is hair of the dog. It re relates to drinking alcohol the next day in order to cure your hangover. Now, the origin of this is the idea of, well, uh, have you heard of, uh, of rabies? Rabies. Um, rabies is a disease which infects some animals and especially dogs. So dogs, dogs who have rabies become very aggressive, extremely aggressive. And if a dog with rabies bites you, then you will be infected with rabies as well. It sounds horrific. And the old traditional uh, wisdom, I don't know if it's true. I mean, surely it's not true. Um, but the, 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 the old traditional advice was, if you get bitten by a dog, in order to cure the disease, you have to find the dog that bit you, take some of its hair and eat that hair. If you eat the hair of the dog that bit you, then you will be cured. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's bull crap, isn't it? I think it must be. I don't know, maybe that needs to be scientifically tested, but I'd be surprised if that was really true. But that's where it comes from. The idea of curing uh, rabies by finding the dog that bit you and eating its hair. Hair of the dog. Hair of the dog that bit you. It's like when someone says, go on, have a drink. It'll, it'll help you. Go on, hair of the dog. Or if you, at lunchtime, you say, you know what? I think I'll have a Bloody Mary. What, hair of the dog? That's what that means. Okay. Moving on to uh, the things in reference to my story. Um, uh, Amber said to me, you never lie and your story is too obscure too obscure to be made up. Okay, obscure. Obscure. Um, again, let me remind you, you can find the list of these words on the page for this episode on my website if you want to know the spelling. Uh, O-B-S-C-U-R-E. But if you want to know the spelling of all the other words, if you want to Google them, copy paste them into word lists and whatever, go to the page for this episode on my website. Obscure. It's an adjective. It just means not very well known. Right? Not very well known. Um, that's according to Oxford. Uh, let's see what Collins says. What does Collins say? What would Collins say? Let's see what CollinsDictionary.com says. If something is obscure, it means unknown, only known by a few people. Or if something is obscure, it's difficult to understand because it involves many parts, many complex parts. Um, difficult to understand, not very well known, not very clear. So basically, Amber was referring to the fact that like Bill Oddy and R2-D2's daughter, this is a little bit sort of difficult to understand. And these details uh, seem to come from nowhere. This is a bit weird. So basically, she doubts my, she doubts my um, imagination. She thought this could only be true. There's no way that you could come up with these sort of these unrelated details and put them together in a story. Ha! She, she underestimated me. Um, I, um, Amber said about me, she said, he's very old. He's got a plethora of stories. A plethora. If you have a plethora of something, it means you've got more than enough, more than you need. So she thinks because I'm so old, I've got a plethora of stories. Like I've got loads of stories up my sleeve. I've got stories here, there and everywhere. So she thought that because I'm so old that I've had so many experiences in my long, long life, 
I have a plethora of stories available to me. I have so many, more than I need, that I can just pluck one of the stories out from my memory and use it. So she thinks I didn't need to come up with something, that it was quite likely that I could just pick some random story and Bob's your uncle, I could use it in the game. But again, she underestimated me. And I said to her, oh, ye of little faith, oh, ye, or oh, you of little faith. That's actually from the Bible. It's a kind of, a, an, again, a sort of an idiom, I suppose, or at least a phrase that people use quite a lot. If you, if you say to someone, oh, ye of little faith, it means, oh, you don't have faith in me. You don't believe me. You don't, or you don't have faith in my ability to do something. Oh, ye of little faith, like you underestimated me, or you didn't have faith in me. You di and I said, you didn't think I had it in me. If someone has it in them, it means that they are able to do it. For example, if someone does something extraordinary, right, like, um, I don't know, what would it be? Someone, you, someone who you assumed was kind of like shy and not very confident, like, you know, um, Steve, he seems so shy and unconfident. And then one day, Steve says to, says to you, oh, by the way, guys, I'm uh, doing stand-up comedy tonight at the comedy show. If you want to come down, you know, it could be good. And everyone's like, oh, Steve's doing stand-up, really? All right, well, should we go? Yeah, we'll go and support him. But you, you don't expect it to be any good because he's so shy and not very interesting. All right, come on, let's go and see Steve do stand-up. And then the evening, you're there. All right, we're going to have drinks. So, all right, Steve's going to go. Oh, Steve's turn, is it now? Okay. Oh God, I hope he's going to be all right. And then Steve absolutely smashes it. He's just amazing. He's just like this hilarious person with so much stage presence. Every single story, every joke was just hilarious. The whole room was in the palm of his hand. Like, oh my God, Steve. I didn't think he had it in him. I didn't think he had that ability inside him. I didn't think he was capable of it. And Steve said, comes up and goes, Hi, oh, you see, you didn't, think, you, you didn't think I had it in me, did you? Oh, ye of little faith. Okay. Um, next one. We should have known that he was lying, but honestly, he's got such a track record, so we expected him to be consistent and tell the truth again. A track record. Your track record, I mean, it's a reference to athletics, right? A track record would be the record of your previous times. So if you're talking about running, uh, the 100 meter sprint, your track record would be all of the times that you've run the 100 meters in the past, right? That's your track record. So it's just basically the, 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 the record of things you've done before. So for me, my track record was that I always tell the truth. Just every single time we play the game, it's truth. Tell the truth, tell the true story, true story, true story. One lie that I've told in the entire history of the game, all of the, the others have been, a, have been true stories. So that's my track record. It's just true, 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 lie. True, 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 true. So Amber's like, look at his track record. He just tells the truth. That's why she thought I was going to tell the truth again. Talking about cows, for Amber's story, people get trampled by cows, to be trampled. Um, Led Zeppelin fans, you might know their song Trampled Underfoot from the Physical Graffiti album, 1975, is it? One of my favourite Led Zeppelin tracks that just comes to mind. Anyway, trampled. To be trampled is to be squashed under people's feet. Horrible idea. Or to be squashed under the feet of animals. For example, if there's a big herd of cows and they all, for some reason, get all scared and they all run towards you all at the same time and because they are brainless, I mean, they're, you know, no disrespect for, to cows. Any cows listening, sorry, I don't mean any offence. Uh, but um, if they all get spooked and they start running and, and for, you st oh my God, they're, oh no, they're running this way and you fall over and then they, they walk, all, all the cows walk all over you, you get trampled by the cows. And uh, I don't mean to joke about this because this is actually actually very serious. People do get killed and a lot of people get killed every year in the UK because they get trampled by cows. They're actually very dangerous animals. Um, you know, a lot, and, we, and we, we talked about other animals as well that can trample you like hippopotamuses or moose and plenty of other animals that can trample you. You've got to be careful to get trampled. 
right? Uh, to, you're, to, uh, I said to Amber, you're repelled by the image of a cow. If you're repelled by something, you find it repulsive, like it just you find it disgusting, and it it's like you want to it, it sort of pushes you away because you're so disgusted by it. You get repelled by it. You find it repulsive. It's like you can't look at it, and it just makes you want to go away from it. Ugh. Okay, so if Amber Watt genuinely had a phobia of cows, just a picture of a cow, mm, she'd find it repellent. She'd be repelled by it. We also have mosquito repellent, don't we? You know, the stuff we spray on our bodies or stuff we spray in a room and it makes the mosquitoes go, oh, no, 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 ah, and they fly away. <clears throat> Off they go, yeah. Cough, mosquitoes. Sorry to mo any mosquitoes listening. I don't mean to be offensive. I'm sorry. Anyway, to be repelled by the image of a cow. Oh, I can't even look at that. Ugh. Okay. Um, I said, I was quite proud of this line because I felt it was quite poetic. And that's why I want to share it with you again. I said to Amber, so their fleshy bovine bodies shifting left to right as they try to position themselves against the fence to have a look at you. I was trying to paint a picture of a sort of repellent picture of cows. Bovine is, again, the, the sort of um, Latin adjective relating to cows. Fleshy, meaning relating to their bodies, like sort of fleshy. Yeah, mm -hmm. Okay, like a lot of meat or fat on their bodies. Their fleshy bovine bodies shifting, sort of moving to the side or left to right. Shifting left to right as they try to position themselves. You can imagine a large group of cows and they're all standing next to a fence and they're all sort of moving in a in not the most intelligent way, pushing against each other, shifting left to right as they try to have a look at you. You can imagine that is actually quite a, quite a disturbing image looking out, looking out at you uh, from their, their weird eyes. Um, Amber said, I started getting anxious, scared, nervous. I don't I don't know if she did actually say all of those words, anxious, scared, or nervous, but I've put them all together because they are synonyms, they're similar. Anxious, scared, nervous, similar words, they describe a similar feeling. If you're anxious, you're kind of like, oh, not very comfortable, like if there's cows there, and you're like, oh, now I'm starting to feel anxious. Can we go? Can we go? Can we go, please? No, really, can we go now? What, are the cows making you anxious? Yeah, you know how I get, it's like my anxiety says, right? Scared, I think we know what scared is, frightened. Nervous as well. Nervous is similar. So like, uh, maybe before you have an exam, before your IELTS speaking exam, you might be feeling a bit nervous. Oh, I just can't relax. Oh, what's the matter? Oh, I'm feeling a bit nervous about my exam. Yeah, you'll be fine, you'll be fine. Before you go to the dentist, you feel nervous. So anxious, scared, nervous. These words are similar. But something I just wanted to point out is that nervous does not mean angry. And uh, in my time as an English teacher, I have noticed some of my students putting those words together or saying nervous when they mean angry. For example, a driver who you want to try to find a parking space in an Ikea car park and it's like, oh, there's a space, go for it. And another car goes in just before you. <laughs> Now, in that case, you are angry. You're not nervous. You're not nervous in that situation. Angry in that situation. Or stressed. Pissed off, annoyed, frustrated, angry. But not nervous. Nervous belongs with anxious and scared in that area. Okay, so nervous does not mean angry. Um, farmers put their hand all the way. This is what Paul said. God knows why he mentioned this, but he, I think he just wanted to talk about this. That farmers put their hand all the way inside the rear end of a cow. Um, yeah, it's true, isn't it? Farmers or veterinary, you know, vets who specialize in cows sometimes have to stick their hand all the way inside the rear end of a cow. The rear end refers to the backside of a cow. So Paul here is talking about someone who has to stick their entire arm inside the bum of a cow. Lovely image there for you. You're welcome. Um, horses. Horses are renowned for kicking you when you're behind them, said Paul. To be renowned for, do, for doing something. Renowned for, if you're renowned for doing something, it means everyone knows that you're doing, that you do it. You're famous for doing it. You can get a hoof in the head. A hoof right the, a hoof is basically a, a a horse or cow's foot 
right? Horses, cows, deer, they have hooves, or one hoof, two hooves, H-O-O-V-E-S, hooves uh, is the plural, okay? So these are uh, the feet of cows, um, uh, horses, a, a hoof. You can get a hoof in the head if a cow hits you, kicks you, bam! Actually, I, I'm, I'm not sure someone said these exact words. I don't think anyone said you can get a hoof in the head. Uh, but I just want to, but I, the, the word hoof definitely did come up. Hoof, hoof, some people say hoof, some people say hoof, plural, hooves. Anyway, cows are all squished up close to each other. To be squished up, squished means squashed. Orange squash, you squash an orange to get the juice out, right? Squish is the same word, basically, to squish or to squash, same thing. So the cows, when they're in a big group, they, they're all squished up close to each other, all squashed up next to each other, which kind of makes them a bit scary if it's a large group of them. How do you feel, I said to Amber, how do you feel when you get on line nine at 9 a.m. in the morning? And Paul laughed because that's exactly what it's like on Metro Line 9 or Line 8 at 9 a.m. in the morning in Paris. Uh, it's the same thing, but with humans, all squished up together. I said, how do you feel on Line, I, line 9 at 9 a.m. in the morning when there are lots of people mooing around? Also, <laughs> people mooing around, moo, remember, is what a, the noise a cow makes. So if there are people mooing around, it means basically, I mean, there are sort of large groups of people sort of wandering around a bit like a herd of cows, sort of moving around in a sort of slightly brainless way altogether, um, which is what it's like on the metro first thing in the morning. I said, I, uh, Amber said, I don't have animosity towards cows. Uh, to have animosity towards something just means like ill will. Um, if you have uh, animosity, it's like a strong feeling of dislike or even a strong feeling of anger, like a strong negative feeling against something to have animosity. You know, we talk about animosity between uh, football players supporters from different teams like Manchester United supporters and Liverpool supporters famously have a lot of animosity um, between each other okay um, you know you might have animosity towards your neighbor if your neighbor neighbor makes a lot of noise or makes a lot of disturbance you know you might have a lot of animosity towards them but Amber said she hasn't she has no animosity towards cows she just doesn't want to get trampled um Rational, irrational, right? A rational fear, an irrational fear, fine. Uh, I, um, we started talking about how humans are actually um, uh, easily hurt by animals, especially large animals, even animals which are not carnivores, animals which don't hunt humans. Animals that are normally hunted by other animals can also be very dangerous. Basically, we are very, um, what's the word for it, vulnerable to large animals and we can be easily hurt because, I said, we're basically flimsy, naked monkeys. So uh, flimsy, flimsy just means kind of weak, uh, easily broken, right? Um, right, e weak and easily broken. I'm just trying to think if there's something in my office which is sort of flimsy um not really uh i i somewhere here i've got an iphone cable i've got an iphone cable which is sort of flimsy and like the some of these i think it's a cheap iphone like um fake iphone cable i've got here but it, it was very flimsy and the the plastic part has cracked and the, the rubber cable has split. And I think I really have to stop using this now because it's actually dangerous. The rubber coating has come off and some of the, some of the wires are actually exposed. It's such a f so flimsy, such a flimsy cable. Basically, it broke easily. Uh, what else could be flimsy? Like a flimsy door. Like the door, the, the door handle just came off in my hand. It just broke off in my hand. It was so flimsy. Or you know those plastic forks? Like if you buy lunch from some takeaway place and they give you a plastic fork and you're eating your food and just snap, the fork snaps off in your food and you end up like, oh, oh, like ch choking on a piece of the plastic fork which has broken off in your food. These, these plastic forks are so flimsy. 
flimsy. We are basically flimsy naked monkeys, aren't we, humans? And you're all going, yeah, 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 we are, yeah, basically, yeah. And then we ended up, Amber said, she said, I saw a, 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 a photograph of a monkey with alopecia. Basically, this is a monkey with no hair. Alopecia is a, a medical condition which um, causes all the hair, all someone's hair to fall out, especially on the head, but it can be the entire body as well. So a monkey with alopecia was a monkey that had a condition and all its hair had, had come out. And she said she saw this picture of this monkey that was totally naked and she said it was ripped it was ripped they're just all muscle so if something is ripped it means that they are like really really muscular like if someone who goes to the gym and does lots of weight weight training lifting weights all the time and all, all the machines and stuff they will be like ripped really muscular so amber saw a picture of a monkey with alopecia with no hair and she said it was ripped they're just all muscle and she described when she was where? Where was she? Was it in India? She said, a monkey jumped out and I thought that monkey can have me any day. Meaning that monkey could, could beat me in a fight. And then we talked about seeing gorillas at the zoo. And I talked about seeing a gorilla that was like the size of a Volkswagen. And that's no joke. I mean, it's the best way to describe it. It was like huge, like a Volkswagen Golf. But like he would sit there and he would just sort of like scratch his head, you know, and he just looked like a bloke. He looked like a massive bloke. So a bloke is, this is British English for just a man, right? And who's that bloke over there? Right. Let's see, this bloke comes up to me. Like, look at that gorilla. He looks just like a bloke, isn't he? Just like a really massive bloke. <laughs> All right, mate. All right. All right, Dave. Yeah. Okay, well, that, that's it. That's the end of the vocab list. Again, you can find that on the uh, page for this episode on my website. Um, I mean, I'm going to mention that, that show at the Zenith that we talked about, but I think you probably know by now that that show, that show has already happened. It happened on January the 6th. Um, it was great. Um, in the end, Paul did invite me to perform, and I did so. 4,200 people. It was wonderful. Uh, had a really great time. I talked about it two episodes ago. Uh, but just a reminder that show, if, if you if you think I'd love to get tickets for that, I'm afraid it's not possible. It's already happened. Um, thanks also to James Kuo uh, for making these two episodes happen because James um, wrote to Paul during his live show um, online and said, hey, when are you going to be back on Luke's English podcast? So thanks, James, for kind of kicking this all off. Sometimes that's all we need, just like a little little poke, a little prompt. Uh, to you know organize these these things um but it was good to have uh, the pod pals back on the podcast that's enough for me uh in this episode i think i'll be back in your eardrums in the next one um uh premium subscribers yes i said it at the start i'll say it again episodes one to six of lep premium series 56 are available there they are fresh and waiting for you to use Lots more vocabulary with examples and then other stuff that you can use to help you remember and use and pronounce more target language. A bit like the way I've done with this, but in a slightly more uh, complete uh, way. Uh, P56 parts one to six are available for you right now in your podcast app. Uh, if you have not added LEP Premium to your podcast app, then I suggest you do that. Sign into your Acast Plus account and then just do that on your phone right get a podcast app on your phone i recommend pocket casts and then sign and then go to plus.acast.com sign into your account with the details you used when you signed up and then click listen in podcast app and then choose the app you've got on your phone click add subscribe to the the new feed that you receive and bob's your uncle you've got lep premium on your phone and check the show notes for premium episodes in the list and that's where you'll find the link for PDFs and video versions. Okay. All right. Um, so the little reminder there, uh, if you want more information about LEP premium, teacherluke.co.uk slash premium info. Um, so I have a few more episodes with guests coming. These are episodes actually that I recorded late last year. Um, these are episodes coming to Luke's English podcast, the free podcast over the next couple of weeks. 
episodes with guests coming. Episodes which I hope you will find interesting. I think they are really interesting episodes. Um, so I've got about three episodes with guests coming. And then after that, I'm planning to do more solo podcasts for a while. Just going to just kind of keep it simple a little bit and just try and do some stuff on my own for a while on the podcast. Um, not forever. I'll come back to guests and stuff later in the year, but there'll be a period where I think I'm just going to kind of keep it just just focus on doing solo episodes for a little while, including some more stories, which I've been enjoying doing a lot. I love uh, reading out stories, short stories. I love doing the acting, especially. I love interpreting the story. And if there are moments where I can do acting, like I did in the Sherlock Holmes one and the the Christmas Carol one, then, then you know, I'll do that too. That's lots of fun for me. Um, Maybe I'll pick up the guitar as well at some point soon, but that's not today. There's not there's there's no time. Um, I have a few more questions. Uh, I have a few more episodes with guests. I've just said that. Um, that's it though. That's the end of the episode. Don't be a ninja, okay? Leave a comment. Uh, I hope you're not a skeleton. Let me know that you're still breathing. Um, if you again check the episode page uh, on my website, you will find links to previous episodes of the Lying Game. So if you really enjoyed The Lion Game, there's loads of them in the archive going back to episode 308. So that's a long time ago. So you've got like a plethora of Lion Game episodes that you can enjoy. So you can do that if you want. But otherwise, have a great morning. Have a great afternoon, evening or night. I will speak to you next time. But for now, it's just time to say goodbye. Bye, 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 bye.